right, let's go ahead and continue blocking this uh, prop. So this is what I've shown you in the previous video, uh, what I want that I was going to do. So I just want to break it down so that you see how simple setting things up is. And once I show you the, the full kind of like block out of what I have, you see it's rather complex. Um, but it's all made of very, very simple shapes. So again, what we're trying to create is something like that, uh, just as a refresher, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring in this uh, outline just to show you this block right here. Um, the other ones that you see here, I'll show you that in a second. This, they're hidden for the time being, just because I wanna concentrate on this one. And what this is, is basically a simple primitive. Um, I can go ahead and rename it base, for example, double clicking on that. So you see it is a cube. So if I go ahead and move this out of the way, um, this is just a simple cube, right? So let's go ahead and undo that because the the other parts that are subtracting this cube or you know getting rid of these sections and creating these more complex shapes are other cubes. So basically, this is another cube. Let's go ahead and go to properties, and I'm gonna set it from subtract to union, and you'll see that now this is obviously the other ones are subtracting, but this is basically a simple cube that I'm just using to subtract that initial line. Um, if I select the other one. Let's say this one right here again if i can combine it uh it is the same thing i just changed the the proportions of it and i removed it so very very simple stuff so just to give you an idea if i select the base which is highlighted in blue that means it is set to union um i can right click on it and i can click on duplicate so that duplicates and obviously it's you know kind of like unifying everything so i can just go ahead and move it like so uh, maybe scale it like that and like so just to give you a, an, an extra you know idea of how to work with this and i can click on subtract so that is how i generated those shapes with a bunch of cubes so obviously this is giving me something very basic i can go ahead and maybe use the chanfa to create an interesting shape like so um maybe duplicate it this one more time so i'm going to duplicate that uh, move it up i'm going to remove the chanfa and i'm going to rotate it like so and then move that like that right now this is how simple things are you can just move and and create booleans with primitives but remember that whatever you select so in this case this one that i have here i can also blend that so you can change that uh the effect that this has over it and create this really nice uh bevel let's go ahead and select this other one and i can bleed that or blend this with the rest so that's how easy it is to create these very complex shapes now i'm just moving away from the actual shape that i want to create so i'm going to go back to the outliner and this one right here that i duplicate i'm going to delete it as well as this one all right so i just wanted to show you um just so that you're aware that if i select this one i'm selecting the entire block so i have one two three and four so this third one is just like a, a really narrow one uh, that is allowing me to create this this shape right here okay so yeah, that's basically the, the breakdown of these shapes. And this is exactly the same thing that I did for the other shapes. So let's go ahead and jump into the other ones. So I have this, this object right here, which is meant to be this section or the one here um, at the back on the right hand side. So that is made out of, let's go ahead and open uh, the right block here. So it's a cylinder that is subtracting this base. Uh, then we have a cube and this is a cube i just went ahead and added uh some some roundness and some fillet right so let's undo that uh so yeah very very simple stuff uh this primitive is just this this section right here that is just adding the uh, it's kind of like a like an edge to it but again because everything is non-destructive i can just go ahead and say you know what i want this to be a bit thicker so i can just scale it like so and scale it down and as i mentioned in the previous video if this is getting a little bit too uh you know you can see a lot of the faceted polygons. You can simply right click and increase the resolution. I'm gonna keep it as it is just because, you know, I, I like to work with low resolution. It's a little bit easier. And this has like a, I think like a, like an endless possibility in terms of resolution. So you can keep increasing it if your computer can handle it. Um, and thanks to the RTX, um, you know, 4090, uh, you know, for, for me in this case is pretty simple, um, I guess. So I can just go ahead and right click and, you know, give me more resolution um with this one in mind i'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of uh, maybe just bleed this into the to the rest just so that i have that really nice tapering effect uh, and maybe add a bit of fillet as well so you see it's just very easy to to round these shapes and, and simplify it um, maybe i'm gonna take this one and i'm gonna push it back a bit like so and one thing that you'll notice is i have like a this this nice uh, sort of bevel in here and that is not given by the cube so if i select that and push it and let me just get the, the right one 
there we go so you see that one doesn't have that that roundness that is because i have another cube that is sitting right here and it's subtracting let me select it uh, from the outliner so this one right here and this is the one that is giving me that nice shape so if i go to the properties of this object or this simple cube that is subtracting this piece right um, i can play with the bleeding or the not bleeding the blending right and that is what gives me the the nice bevel so you know and this is what i love about this process that it is non-destructive so at any point that you can come back and say you know what this one i want to blend this a little bit better or this one itself like the the base i can you know blend it with that uh, but you know i'm happy with how this is looking and we can we can soften this uh, this transition later on uh, but yeah that's basically it now this rounded shape here this kind of like concave uh shape is done by a sphere uh, but i want to show you something very cool uh, i'm going to select that sphere from here I'm gonna actually delete it just so that I can show you the process. I'm gonna delete that. Um, and I wanna create, if I bring in the orb, this is just another sphere, right? I wanna be able to create that uh, separate. So this is what, you know, you, I haven't mentioned it yet, but you might have noticed that these objects are darker than this one. That is because I have these in different groups. So if I go ahead and turn off the orb right now, and while I'm in this group, and the, the way that you know that you're within the group is because it is highlighted with this uh, lighter color and this one is not. If I, uh, let's say, right click and add a new one, like a sphere, let's go ahead and push this like so, and let's set it like this. It, it achieves the same result, it is the same effect, but ultimately what you're doing, you're just adding this one into the, the same um, the same object. So uh, this is getting, you know, is bleeding into this one or is combining it with the previous one. Um, and when it comes to like materials and, um, you know, setting up the texture and everything where we're going to do in other videos, uh, this is a very important thing to keep in mind, like which objects are you going to keep separate? So instead of doing it within the group, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. I'm going to press escape and that sort of like takes me out of that group. If I want to go back in, I can double click it and then you'll see I'm inside this group again press escape bar there we go and now that you see everything this is kind of like the the scene assembly mode um once i'm in this mode i can right click again and you see i have uh, some areas or some sections that have been you know grayed out whereas if i go into the group double clicking on it right click now they're not all of them they're not grayed out and that's just another way of um, recognizing that you're within the group so that's basically what i did i just went ahead and create a new sphere at this scene assembly mode Right, and you see it just appears. Oops, this is a clay one. That's not what I want. Right click, uh, primitive. Sorry, uh, click on a sphere, and that, that that is the sphere right here. So that creates a separate object. So immediately, or a separate, let's say, group. Um, so immediately, this one is in its own object. I can just go ahead and place that, and it's not going to um, affect. It's not going to blend with anything that is underneath. So I just wanted to show that because that's an important concept, especially for the other pieces that I'm going to have um, in there. So yeah, let's go ahead and enable that orb. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show you is that if I move this orb out of the way, I still want to have like this sort of concave effect. So how can I achieve that? So if I double click to get into this group, right? So we are only affecting this set of uh, polygons. Uh, this is a really nice trick that I found really useful when I'm working on this type of, um, you know, objects and I want to maintain kind of like the, the center line in here. So I want to select um, this cylinder, which is just the one giving us the, the general shape in here. Uh, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate it with this action right here. So if I duplicate it, nothing happens. It's just duplicated. I'm going to rename this uh, concave just so that I know what it is. Um, and I can go to the properties and I can change the shape, but maintaining the same position right because all i'm doing is just moving it in this axis so let's click on choose shape change it to a sphere an orb and to reset the actual sphere we can click on this icon right here there we go and yeah you see it's basically the same thing as i have so now i can push this up and because this is part of this group it's not affecting the anything outside it's only affecting this and i can click on uh, subtract there we go so now i can play around with this just to to have enough space in there uh, and then I can press escape bar come come back and bring my orb in here all right so that's the beauty of the non-destructive workflow let's go ahead and open up the other things that I've prepared so we have the viewer which is this uh, this little section right here in the 
in the mockup or in the in the quick sketch. And the idea is, I don't know, just some kind of scanner that um, you can see through or enhance whatever you see or whatever you have within the orb, kind of like a X-ray type of thing. Um, and this is why I wanted to show you this because, you know, when you get to something like this and you wanna, let's say, add uh, a lens in here and you are in this mode, if you go ahead and add something, it's going to immediately blend it with this object or subtract from this object. So what I want is to have a different material or or something or a different object really um, that I can use and then add a material like a transparent material, for example. So again, in scene assembly mode, uh, what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to click on a sphere here and that sphere. Uh, by the way, a couple more things that might uh, help you when you're setting things up like so is to change the camera. So you can click on the camera, you can click on perspective so that or toggle that off so that is an orthographic view. And as you rotate holding the Alt and the left mouse button, you can press Shift and that sort of like snaps to the different areas. And I think at this point, the, the grid, those little dots that you see there are a little bit distracting. So you can go to the world, click on ground and show grid. So that shows that or turn that off. And now I can just go ahead and place this a little bit better. Let's go ahead and select it from the, the Y axis. And let's rotate, holding shift again, just to snap it to the, the other side. Um, and I think this one needs to, you know, needs to be a little bit squashed like so. All right. I think that works. Let's push that in roughly. Again, I'm just looking at the references. So this is the this is what I'm trying to create, that blue lens that when you see through it with this sort of like yellow um, glass, it sort of like looks a bit greenish. That's the idea. Um, okay, so select that one, scale that down, and yeah, it's just playing with the with the position at this point. But you see, uh, I'm not affecting the that sort of like viewer shape at all because it is its own shape. It's its own, um, it's called primitive container, right? So it's its own container. So now if I press, escape we we'll go back to the scene assembly again we can just go back double click on it um, adjust anything that we want and I think I think this works all right perfect so let's go ahead and add a bit more intricacy to this shape so I'm gonna do this shape right here and maybe cut up this piece just to show you how easy this is but again it's more about it's more it's more of the same it's very repetitive um, what I'm doing right now which is blocking out this scene so let's go ahead and double click on this one to enter in this container and let's go ahead and let's reuse some of the things that we have. So I'm gonna select this one and open up the outliner so you can see what we have, only three pieces. Uh, by the way, so we have a cylinder that is being blended, by the way. So I'm just blending this with the rest, which is really nice. Um, and then I have another one, which is exactly the same cylinder, sl slightly smaller, that is subtracting. That's what gives me that, that hole. Uh, but I can move this around and create a hole somewhere else, right? So again, very simple, just two cylinders and a cube that has a bit of chamfer or not chamfer, what's the name? Uh, fillet or fillet, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so with this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna duplicate it. And also I'm gonna remove the fillet and the roundness so that I know which one it is. I'm gonna set it to subtract and let's go ahead and move it out of the way. So I'm gonna use this one to, to sort of like cut a little shape, like a, a little corner. So let's rotate. I'm going to hold the shift key just to snap uh, to something like this. There we go. And then, of course, we can push things in and out a bit. Um, and I think, looking at it, I might do a little bit of blending so that it's not perfectly, like it's not super sharp. All right. I think that works. Perfect. So you see, this is a very simple way of adding complexity to a rather simple model. Um, let's go ahead and add kind of like an area so that we can fit these. Uh, this could be like dials, for instance. So let's try that. So again, um, maybe we can reuse the cylinder. Again, for me, it's just a simple way of uh, speeding up the process because if you were to add a new cylinder, it will be pointing upwards. So let me just show you. I can right click, add a new cylinder, right? So that cylinder, it will be pointing upwards. So I have to not only move it around and rotate it, hold and shift and scale it, all of that good stuff, right? Um, I'm gonna delete it because again, it's, it's just like a way of simplifying steps. So I'm gonna reuse this cylinder. Again, that's the shape that I'm after. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate it, right click and duplicate. And I'm just gonna move it like so, scale it down and push it. So again, this one, if this is going to be the dial and I push it like closer because I have this bleeding or I keep saying bleeding, but it's the blending of 2.8 
um, millimeters, right, uh, is going to start blending with the object as, as I move it closer, right? I can obviously set this to zero, right? And that way, there's not gonna be uh, an evident blend, but if I get it closer enough, it's still gonna be part of that object. So what I'm gonna use this is to simply subtract an area that I can then feed those dials. So let's um, let's leave the, blend, the blending to zero. Um, let's click on subtract, and that's pretty much what I'm after. Let's remove this or scale it down, and let's push this in. Alrighty, I think something like that would work. And let's play around with the blending. Perfect. So that looks that looks pretty good to me. Um, let's right click and duplicate it, and now we can move this like so. Um, it's not exactly the same thing as the reference. These ones are smaller, but I think it works. Um, you know, this the, the sketch that I have is purely to give me uh, a, a starting point or something to aim for. Uh, but as I do this, and this is the, the beauty of the non-destructive workflow, I can easily adjust and, and design things on the fly. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this up by selecting this one, uh, duplicating it. I'm going to move it to the right-hand side. I'm going to scale it in the Z-axis. I'm going to set it to subtract remove the fillet and the roundness of it. Um, and instead, let's go ahead and scale it as well. Like so I can use the chamfer, um, actually it's doing it. Yeah, so so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this like so. And let's do it again. So that I can get this nice sort of um, octagon shape in here. So I'm gonna use this like so, reduce the chamfer a bit and push it forward. All right, now this is another trick just to, again, to wrap up this video. If I hold the control key, I can change one side without um, affecting it in both sides of the axis. So usually if you click on any of these points, you know, it just changes the, you know, the top and the bottom part of the set axis in this case. But if I hold the control key, I can only affect one. So that's another way you can adjust things fairly easy. Uh, I'm just gonna push this one closer like so. And I think that is working pretty well. I'm gonna maybe add a bit of blending of this one not too much um, and I'm gonna right click and increase the resolution again all right so that's not too bad and all I have to do now again I don't want to blend this other object so this little uh, capsule or this thing right here um, I don't want to blend it with the rest so I'm gonna press escape to get out of this container right click I'm gonna create a new one this time it's gonna be a capsule and all I have to do now is place this wherever this uh, should be, right? Now, just a couple more things uh, before I wrap up this video. Uh, in some cases, let's say in this uh, reference right here, I have a couple of lines and panels uh, that make this capsule a bit more intricate than what this is. But this is something that you can achieve using just texture. So uh, sometimes like little details or little panels, it's not worth doing them in, in the actual object. You can just rely on something like normal map or you know the texture once you get to it. So I'm gonna leave the capsule as it is. Uh, that is a pretty good blocking. And finally, the other thing that I need to show you is if I go ahead and go back to the outline, the scanner is another shape that is a little bit more complex because it has a bunch more uh, pieces that are subtracting and, and blending into it. But that is essentially this piece right here, right? And yeah, this one right here. So again, very, very simple stuff. Um, I started with a cube and then I have a bunch of other cubes, as you see, you know, subtracting pieces all around. Uh, but again, because it is non-destructive, let's say if I don't like this shape right here, let's go in. Um, I can select it and I can just move this around. It's just a simple cube. Uh, maybe the, the fillet is a little bit too strong. I can reduce that, right? Or I can increase it. So that is the, the real beauty of designing um, with this type of primitives that uh, are non-destructive. All right, so that is basically done. Like this is the this is the block cut. I know that you know when you compare it with the, the little sketch, there are a few more things that are missing, but that is the idea um, for the next video. So yeah, in the next video, I'm gonna give you a breakdown of how you can add all of these additional details and make this prop look really, really nice. So don't forget to save. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. File and save this. And I'll see you in the next video.